All right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Ravi Gupta, who is up in the Bay Area, just up the road in uh, San Francisco. How are you doing, Ravi? I'm doing great, John. How are you? I'm, I'm doing fantastic. And Ravi is a serial entrepreneur and he's working with his current founding team for 10 plus years. And they've used AI to build uh, recommendation engines, social platforms and enterprise software. And their vision is now to set the standard for business relationships using AI to personalize the physical and the digital experience with his company, uh, EvaBot. And that's what we're going to talk about today is how you you are leveraging ai to build relationships because cuz i want to jump into this immediately rabbi because yeah. a, ai and bots and things like that have let's say like have had mixed results shall we say that and um, people's attitude to them is you know, is uh, skeptical to say the least about whether these can really enhance you know, personal relationships and all of that, or whether they are just an easy way for companies to do to automate things. So, um, what? So, what do you go and address address that first? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, I'll um, I'll take it in two ways. Like, number one thing is the chatbot. The second is uh, the AI and the current state of AI. Uh, so, the chatbots. I mean. There were a lot of like hype about chatbots, uh, especially with you know Facebook doing a lot of things about mm-hmm. um, you know the chatbots. The the challenge that immediately became was you know everyone wanted to do everything with the chatbot, right? And we quickly realized that the the problem to solve here is like not NLP and you know how you can figure out what the intent of a user is and then try to mm-hmm. you know answer a question. You know the chatbots would work really well if they are very specific to a certain task, and that is why you see that you know chatbots related to customer support are pretty uh, successful, right? Because they are they are intent to do a certain job. Um, our insight initially was that the chatbots are a great way to uh, you know do a deep conversation, um, and when humans are chatting with machines. Um, the advantage you get there is, you know, they they open up way more than they would open up with another human, uh, and that is the tendency, you know. Anyway, that's with us because uh, we have kind of learned to trust machines, uh, you know, when we go online or when we create social profiles and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So what we do is we actually use uh, chatbots for a very very specific purpose, which is to get to know you to send you a mm-hmm. gift. Right. And because you are basically, I mean, we started with gifts, but, you know, as I go along, I'll tell you more about how we are actually using the the whole conversation now to build repo as well. Um, So so we started with gifts. So we knew that, you know, people would share their information uh, as long as it's a very honest, trustworthy conversation. Uh, And the person that is basically sending the gift, you know, you know that person. Right. so, so that trust is built and then, you know, you just do a simple two to three minutes conversation with the bot and where the bot can have, you know, multiple, um, I would say flows, but it's still very confined to the idea that I'm getting to know you to get you something, right? Right, Which is right, right. Personalized to your taste. And I believe that is why, you know, um, it's been more successful than general chatbots, you know, which is, you know, you don't have an intent. This is true for any company also, right? If you build a company Mm -hmm. and then you don't have a very specific purpose or a product that doesn't solve a specific problem, uh, you know, it will fail. And same with the chatbots. I think most of the chatbots try to solve for the, you know, NLP problem and then understanding the intent behind everything that people want to say. Uh, Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I believe it didn't work. But uh, most of the chatbots that work today are like very, very specific. Um, right. And then coming to AI, right? Like, yeah, um, actually, just let, let me ask you just one quick question on that. Uh, uh, because if, um, as you say, I mean, in your case, I mean, you're using the bot, you're trying to gather that information. Uh, 
in order to do something that's yeah. of benefit benefit to the customer. I think one of the problems that people have with bots is that some companies try and pretend that the bots aren't bots, right? And I think that frustrates people. So, I mean, if you're honest about it, you're using a bot, but you're using it for a purpose and it's a good purpose and it's, it's, it's advantageous to the person engaging it. I think that's different. But I think you have to be honest when you say that it's a bot instead of pretending it's not. That's that's a very good point. Uh, so one thing is, of course, uh, letting people know that it's a bot and, you know, you don't really have to tell it. It's more like sure. we put it in our name. So it's very clear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, when you uh, and the advantages of bots are, are a lot, you know, a form, for example, can collect the same data, but a form cannot have a personality, right? Mm. A form cannot talk to you in a certain way. Uh, plus, if you see the length of the form, you will be like, oh, I don't want to fill it, right? Um, with chatbots, because it can have a personality and it can have multiple personalities, right? So in our case, you know, it can be a professional tone or it can be a casual tone or a funny tone, right? You can actually do mm -hmm. all of that to 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 make it like two to three minutes of like fun engagement, uh, right? Mm -hmm. And those things are not there with any form or any other thing. So that is the main advantage of using bots, um, in my opinion. Right, right, right. No, I, I, I like that idea. Um, and it's great. Obviously, it's great that the bots can have multiple personalities. Not so great when humans have them, but uh, <laughs> bots can the bots can handle it. So yeah. So let's let's move on to to AI and machine learning. So what we have seen is, you know, uh, so that's why when we started like the company, we started with one specific use case, which is getting to know people, and then surprising them with gifts that they would like but in the process because we were gathering information on people right suppose uh, i send you a gift today and mm -hmm. the bot gets to know you that say right. you, you are a fan of you know uh, sf giants and you know uh, you love coffee uh, say you have kids and a pet right if if i gather this information um, then it can be used beyond gifts as well right uh, so for example, if SF Giants just won a tournament, I can actually send you an email saying, hey, you know, this was a great game, you know, uh, and, and stuff about that. So we were thinking, why don't we use AI to, to actually use this data and then create more meaningful experiences uh, and engagement for people? Um, and when we look, when you look at the current state of AI, all these new um, technologies like you know, um, NLGs, right? Like, uh, like copy.ai, open AI, all these uh, uh, great tools uh, are coming out like GPT-3. So, so there is a natural way in which you can, um, we can actually fit AI into our use case. Uh, it's not like forcing AI into, you know, doing something which is not natural. Um, so for example, uh, I want to build a relationship with you right and you like say certain type of coffee now there's a new coffee shop that just opened up near your house mm -hmm. for me it's almost impossible to to you know keep a track of that information right or suppose there's a tornado coming near your house or something right, right. again like very hard for me to individually track every customer or every employee's um, data like that but a machine can do it right so what we are building is, you know, the AI to actually keep a track of all of this information and then give you proactive alerts um, and then proactive nudges, we call them. Uh, so that when you get a nudge like, you know, SF Giants won a tournament and you have these five customers who love F SF Giants. So, so send this email. Now, even if I don't know anything about the game, you know, I should be able to write that email. And that there we can use AI, right? We can use GPT-3 to actually write a very, very personalized email and send it to these five customers. So, so that is how we are trying to use AI, which is like, which fits into our natural um, philosophy of uh, rapport building or relationship building, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then trying but to- But in, in that- new Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I was going to ask you, and in that use case, obviously, the email is coming from a human at the end of the day, because yeah. you're trying to build a human to human um, relationship. It's just that you're using AI to keep you informed. And as you say, nudge you and alert you and keep you make sure that your communications have context. And then that they're yeah. 
that you can get it down to the granular level for, as you said, I mean, maybe it's a subset of three customers, maybe it's just one, whatever it is, but it, or, or prospects or whatever, but it allows, yeah, it allows, it enhances the human connection. I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Uh, see, if I come to you and tell you that, hey, you know, uh, don't you actually want to congratulate your friend or your clients, uh, you know, whose favorite team just won a tournament? And you would say, yes, I, I want to, right? So you actually want to have that connection or have that deeper relationship or engagement with your customers and employees or anyone, right? But the challenge is it's humanly impossible to do it. And if it's humanly impossible, then that's where the machines can come in and help us, right? So it's more like AI helping you uh, get very, very efficient at, at something that you always wanted to do, but you couldn't, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that is that is how we are thinking about it. So you are sending the email, I'm not sending it, but I'm helping you, first of all, tell you about it and then help you write it. And then you can edit the email and send it yourself, right? Right. Yeah, no, I think that I, I think that now is starting to show where AI and and uh, machine learning can actually enhance the, the the relationship because we've heard a lot of talk about AI. Oh, it's going to replace people and all of this. And you don't need people anymore. But the reality is that these tools should be, uh, if you like, uh, elevating like mm -hmm. the salesperson elevated but because they're allowed to focus on on more high value things as opposed to scrambling around with low value activities yeah exactly and um something that is very interesting is you know when ai ai is like a very old term right like i think 50 60 yeah. years or even more than that um and people thought that ai would first do very simple things right and very creative things like painting or writing a paragraph or writing a, an article is is impossible for AIs, right? Or will take probably 100 years. But if you look today, like with GPT-3 and Dolly, like the creative problems are being solved in a great way, right? So so when we look at it, you know, the, the great thing about AI today is um, it's not that it's going, and, and like this similar example in sales, right? Mm -hmm. If you talk about sales, you will say that, oh, relationship building and repo building is basically what a sales is, right? So so this is my capability and it's very hard for any machine to replace it. And that's true in, in like one sense, but it's also true that the AI is taking a leap today and it's going to solve problems that we thought it could never do. And mm -hmm. those problems it could solve better than solving, you know, much smaller problems that we thought, you know, uh, AI would do first. So because AI is taking a leap, uh, we should also in our thinking take a leap that actually the harder problems, the softer problems uh, like, you know, building relationships can actually be solved by AI if used in the right way. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think, uh, and I, and I think uh, again, as I mentioned a moment ago, I think the problem with people's attitude to AI is, number one, it was overhyped at the, at the beginning. And second off, as I said, it was always kind of promoted as, as replacing Replacement. instead, yeah, exactly. instead of, instead of enhancing. And I think what you're talking about there is so different because you're talking about a humans and AI working together instead of working against each other. That's great. I mean, I'll just put one point there. So if you look at your whole sales team, there will be top two or three performers or two or three percent performers who are actually doing this, right? But now using AI, what you can do is your 40 or 50 percent of the performers who are high potential, but they are not able to get to that point. You can immediately put everyone at the same level, right? Everyone actually mm -hmm. uses AI and now gets to the same level. And then from that level, again, it becomes okay who can do more than this, right? Right. But everyone gets to a basic level of uh, repo building or relationship building using AI. So it's almost like you're, uh, it's almost like you are um, codifying best practice and you're, uh, you're, you're taking the best practices, the, the things that we know work, et cetera. And then your, your AI is, is codifying that, making sure that everybody is communicating in a kind of uniform manner, the best way possible. And then, as you say, it's up to the individual what they add to that. Yeah. And and see, like we, we have also uh, coined a concept called repo score, 
so the repo score is is basically a combination of all the ai touch points that we or nudges, nudges that we recommend and then the actions that is taken by the ae right or the account executives on those nudges and then based on all this combination you have a repo score with each account or each uh, say stakeholder in the account right and your manager can see all of this and they can say oh the repo score with this company is going down why and then you can go to your AE and say, hey, you didn't actually take all these actions. You didn't you didn't send this person a birthday cake, right? When you knew this person's birthday is coming up. So now, earlier it was impossible, right? You couldn't say that, hey, you didn't send this person the birthday cake and no one has that information, right? With Eva, you have that information. So then there is no excuse of not doing it. It's just one click. You can deliver lunches, you can deliver gifts you can you can actually send very personalized emails so if you have those nudges in front of you why wouldn't you do that and and that is why what we are trying to solve um, which is not just um, you know suggesting actions that you can take or nudges uh, but also uh, the measurement of that mm-hmm and uh, and yeah and i think the measurement piece that that's really critical because obviously as you said i mean you can you can do all of this but if it's not leveraged then it doesn't really matter um can you is there ways i mean you could actually in your process almost mandate these uh, some actions yeah exactly i actually talking like a vp of sales right now <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so there there can be a playbook that you can actually make it more like automated, right? That these actions will always happen, uh, whether your A takes them or not. Uh, and then it will show that, you know, or, or it can come as a mandatory task under your Salesforce. So there are certain, there are of course playbooks that you can create while we set up the account. And then, you know, um, then certain things are recommended, certain things are mandatory. You can You can define all of that. Mm-hmm. So, um, put on, take out your crystal ball there, and put on your put on your futurist hat, and tell me where where do you see this going from here in the next few years? So yeah, next few years. I mean, uh, we really want. Um, so the way we have we have thought about this problem, of course, um, moving way. The vision has moved way beyond than just uh, delivering amazing physical gifts. Uh, today, the vision is more like. If you look at sales, uh, or especially say any sales which which requires, uh, which is enterprise sales requires AEs, right? Six to nine months of mm-hmm. sales cycle at least. Yep. Any sales like that is just fifty percent your product and services, and rest fifty percent is repo building, right? Mm-hmm. What we have seen is for that fifty percent, which is your product and services, there are hundreds and thousands of tools, uh, but for the rest of the fifty percent, it's just you just leave it to the person, right? Leave yep. it to the A, leave it to the training people, all of that. Um, there is no software or tool to do this. And that is what we are trying to build. So our vision is that eventually, even within repo building, there will be tools and softwares that can help you actually close sales, uh, not just faster, but actually in a very, very measurable way, uh, including the the software piece which is uh, you know repo building and stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah no that's that's interesting i guess the and i guess the, the the last part is that we have to include the we have to explain it and include in the people who are going to be impacted by it so i mean if we're talking about sales and in this case sales people and show them how this enhances what they do as opposed to it just being another thing or a thing that's going to replace them or just another thing that they have to care about. They have to be, it has to be explained to them how this actually is advantageous. Yeah. And it will make it super fun. So Mm -hmm. I have been doing it and it's so much fun uh, that I don't want to, you know, not do it. Right. (laughs) So, because, you know, uh, the power of this is that when you start doing for example, you know, we have fortune, like out of fortune hundred companies, we have like five customers mm-hmm. and I personally engage with them using this product. So I'll send them a very personalized lunch. I know that one of the stakeholders in this company actually loves Mexican food. Right. And, um, so I'll just deliver a surprise Mexican lunch to her. 
Right. And then I'll, I'll wait for her response on my text. And when I get this response, it's it's a good, it's a new high, right? <laughs> that mm-hmm. You are actually mm-hmm. delivering some great experiences to your customers. And then over a period of time, uh, there is this relationship that is automatically getting built. Otherwise, right. you have to do the hard work of actually figuring out everything about everyone, right? And then then trying to solve it yourself. So it's hard and it's it's not fun. So we are trying to make it more fun. We are trying to make it more engaging and measurable as well. Yeah. No, and I, what I like about that is also is that uh, it's like people love good surprises. You know, we don't like bad surprises, but good surprises. Yeah. And and so I guess where you can stand out today is, you know, people aren't surprised that often in a positive way. They're often surprised in a negative way, but they're not, they're not delighted or surprised that often. Mm-hmm. So you're adding in that uh, that's kind of, positive surprise element yeah exactly we are trying to get rid of this whole gift card economy i mean Mm -hmm. you are sending that gift card because you don't know what the other person likes and you don't want to be wrong right so that is why you just send a 50 dollar gift card to your customer and they're like what like okay so you're valuing our relationship at 50 dollars and then (laughs) i have to do the hard work of finding something right and there's no surprise and delight in that but no. if I know that you love Mexican food, and by the way, if you're vegan as well, mm-hmm. then I can actually send you a very specific lunch or, or a surprise lunch. And then in that process, you might also discover a new restaurant or a new dish, right? Because I right. am selecting it or someone else is selecting it on your behalf, right? So there's mm-hmm. serendipity in that as well, not just gifts, yeah. but lunches and stuff like that. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, listen, this has been really fascinating, Rabbi, and all of Rabbi's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell our audience a little bit more about uh, EvoBot. Yeah, so at EvoBot, um, you know, uh, we started with gifts. Uh, and the whole idea was, um, how do you do personalization at scale? From there, we went on to, you know, how do you get to know your customers and employees at scale? And now from there, uh, what we are building is basically how do you build repo with, you know, your customers and your employees at scale. Um, so if you're interested, you know, our new product is in beta and, you know, we are happy to give you access to it if you're interested. All right. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Ravi. Um, I would encourage people to go check it out. It's another great example of people using AI to help and support rather than make promises about replacing or whatever. So <laughs> I, I will go go check it out. So thanks again, Ravi. Thank you for watching and thanks, listening. John. And I will s- see you all again soon. Bye. Yep. Thank you. Bye.